Hey Westland Wanderers, it's Van from FlexGo. Are you ready to dive into the fascinating world of Fallout? Today we are exploring the top 10 creatures from the Fallout universe that we are dying to see in the upcoming Fallout TV series. Get ready for a journey through the Westland's most iconic and fearsome inhabitants. But before we get started, hit the like button and subscribe to FlexGo for more exciting content. Let's get started. Number 1. Death Clothes. No Death Clothes, no serious. Death Clothes are the ultimate Fallout creature who are final boss fight every time they are encountered in the Westland. Until a player can craft the dart gun and paralyze the Death Clothes limbs, they are too fast and ferocious to take on any weapon. They cannot be outrun and deal so much damage that it's hard to heal up while fighting them. Until properly equipped, Death Claw habitats are off limits on the game map. As frightening and deadly as the creature are, they were actually created from harmless chameleons. The US military began developing them before the Great War as replacements for human soldiers. But they got loose and became a scourge wherever they settled. Death clothes are another iconic fallout beast that has appeared in almost every edition of the game. And Mark, the most important creature that should be in the TV series. Number 2. Fog Crawlers There is a lot on the menu in Fallout games, but one dash that should never be ordered is Jumbo Shrimp. Fog Crawlers are giant cross stations that probably mutate from prawns, but also maybe crayfish. Whatever their origin, they are some of the most formidable enemies in the post-Great War environment, with a stout natural armor and a strong life force. They also deal tremendous damage including ranged attack abilities. The only good news about fog crawlers is they tend to stay in foggy areas, hence their name, so they don't randomly appear at a crucial time. Los Angeles, the setting for the Fallout TV series, does experience fog from time to time but doesn't have any permanently overcast swampy areas. There could, however, be a variant of the fearsome creature that inhabits the Libria Torpets, which is as cool as it sounds. Number 3. Super Mutants Super Mutants are Fallout superstars. Super Mutants aren't exactly animals, but they are post-humans. So they also aren't exactly people either, but they for sure qualify as Fallout creatures. Created through human experimentation with the forced evolutionary virus mutagen. Super Mutants are pretty much what their name would suggest. Giant Hulking Humanoid Monsters as with all fallout creatures, they are varying degrees of monstrosity and some can even be reasoned with. Far from feral rapid creatures, super mutants are well equipped and well trained in combat, which makes them some of the most excellent things a Westland Wanderer could come across. It's even worse if there are multiple super mutants or heaven forbid, a 20 foot super mutant behemoth. It's a bit difficult to gauge if Super Mutants will be a part of the TV show, but they certainly should be, considering they have appeared in every Fallout game and are iconic to the franchise. Number 4. Mylarks Mylarks are Westland jerks. Fans of the Fallout games have a love-hate relationship with Mylark because they are suddenly cool creatures, but difficult to dispatch with. Mylarks are possibly the first muted creatures to exist in the Fallout games, having evolved from the polluted waters even before the Great War. In some forms, they look like the creatures from the Black Lagoon had baby with a horse show crap. With natural heavy armor, most varieties of Mylarks can absorb attack after attack without sustaining much damage. Plus, they can dole out the hurt. Battling a Mylark tends to drain the ammo reserves as much as the health of a player. Most of all, they are extremely unsettling to look at and definitely cause panic when they appear, which is reason enough that they should be included in the TV series. Number 5. Animals can be ghouls too. Ghouls aren't so much muted humans as they are simply victims of radiation poisoning. With rotting flesh, much like zombies, they can be somewhat normal and coexist with humans. But there are feral and super irradiated variants that are nothing but terrifying enemies. There is for sure at least one goal in the TV series, but it would be great to add something like a glowing wand to jack things up. Ghouls, however, aren't just humanoid based as they're the Westland is teeming with ghoulified animal species. They can be everything from squirrels to whales and represent some of the worst critters to come across on the quest. 
The TV series is set in the Southern California, which is the home of the Sea World. So a ghoulish orca would be an awesome addition and the ultimate killer whale. Number 6. Yagwai The Yagwai are mutated bears of the wasteland that possess tremendous strength and look like they were spawned in hell. Their slashing and Genshin attack and the one of the most damaging in the game for a non-weapon. Plus, they are extremely difficult to kill. They are more than likely named of the cartoon character Yugi Bear, though a lot more mincing than a picnic basket raider. Many of the Westland mutants creatures are based on animals that are found in the region of a particular game, but bears are spread out across North America, so they can be in any installment. The TV series takes place in Southern California, which is bears and makes them a perfect addition. According to the trailer, there is a Yagwai, so that is a big win for fans. Number 7. Gigas Though they are called Gigas, the Gigas and the Fallout games are mutated versions of an unknown lizard species. The extra-large amphibians are the result of both radioactive and viral mutation, which has created several scary varieties, including one that sped fire. Their hides are prized Westland commodities, which can be fashioned into useful items, including leather armor. The deadliest variety is known as Gorgia, named after everyone favorite kaiju movie monster, and is three times the size of a fire gecko. This version has a lethal attack and is almost unkillable, but must have been deemed too ferocious because it was left out of Fallout New Vegas. Though it can be found in the game files, it would be cool for the TV series to resurrect this beast for at least one episode. Number 8. Floaters Floaters are mysterious self-body and vertebrae creatures that were possibly the result of experimentation rather than mutation. They have sacs filled with noxious and flammable gases that allow them to hover in the air, which probably explains their name. Flame and energy weapons are effective against floaters and will result a very satisfying explosion. Floaters made their debut in the first Fallout game and came back for the sequel, but took some time up front to franchise until Fallout 76. Floaters were supposed to be in Fallout 3 as well as Fallout New Vegas, but were cut from the final product. Though they do appear in the game files, such an awesome and gross creature would certainly be welcomed in the TV show and would it be a spectacle for Vault Dweller Lucy to experience. Number 9. Red Roaches Red Roaches are a stable of the Westland. It just wouldn't be Fallout without Red Roaches and any show that wants to pay proper tribute to the game must include them. The mutated cockroaches are in their common variety the size of a small dog, but can take larger forms in their variations. Mostly just pests. They aren't formidable enemies, but they are a big part of the overall tone and style of the game. Large numbers of road roachers, however, can be a little tricky, and their attacks can distract from a far deadlier enemy. Also, when food gets scarce, Rad Roach's meat will keep a Westland wanderer going until some Blanco mac and cheese can be rustled up. So they have an added importance. Thankfully, it appears from the trailer that Rad Roaches will be a part of the Prime series. Number 10. Red Scorpions Red Scorpions are even more ubiquities than Rad Roaches in the Fallout franchise, appearing in all the main games and most of the spin-offs as well as DLC. What makes them so crucial is that they are fairly common enemies that are frustratingly difficult to kill. Any exploring inclusion is instantly ruined by the presence of a red scorpion, especially one of their more deadly variants. The Fallout games are filled with easter eggs and references to post-apocalyptic films and the Red Scorpions is a nod to the delightfully cheesy 1977 movie, Damnation Alley, which features giant mutated scorpions on the scorched earth landscape. It would be a shame if the TV series didn't pay proper tribute to these important Westland creatures and they would make for some great on-screen opponents. And there you have it. Fellow survivors, our top 10 bags for the creatures we cannot wait to see bring the Fallout TV series to life. Which ones are you most excited about? Did we miss any of your favorites? Let us know in the comment below. 
If you enjoyed this journey through the Westland, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to Flexco for more content like this, and ring the bell so you never miss an update from us. Until next time, stay safe in Westland. See you in the next adventure.